Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Nurse Kaloy. That's my YouTube channel, and I am a nurse. I'm not a doctor, but I have uh, 32 years of nursing experience in California, here in Hawaii, and in Saudi Arabia. I'm back now. I would like to tackle on some health issues, and this time I would like to. Uh, talk about hospice and it's like a very uh, sensitive uh, topic uh, but I just want to give some tips to all family members who is undergoing the situation where their loved ones is uh, on a verge of dying and how I'm, I'm giving you the the uh, tips on how to take care of them, to give them uh, com comfortable and uh, dignity or uh, quality of life during the last or phase of their lives. Okay, uh, like I said, it's kind of sensitive, but uh, it's a way of learning and sharing my 14 years of experience to the family. And uh, yes, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> I work as a nurse 14 years uh, in a facility wherein uh, we took care of a hospice patient in inside a facility. So before I go further, I would like you to know some defines hospice as a place wherein terminally ill patients are being confined but that was a long time ago so uh, the new uh, I mean uh, updated definition is now based of the services that we provide so we define hospice as a program it's a program composed of professionals collaborating to provide a palliative or relief to the patients and family for the, pa the patient to have uh, or relief from pain, comfortable, and to uh, maintain the quality of life before the time comes or the time he passes. Okay, uh, so that's the definition of hospice. It's not a hospital for terminally ill patient because nowadays uh, we are going to the home now do our home visits do health teachings to the family talk to the patient at bedside one-on-one -on -one, not in a hospital setting anymore okay so the division is far gone it's not a place it's not a hospital okay I made that clear Okay, uh, before a patient is admitted to a hospice, it's the doctor, mostly oncologist uh, for patient with cancer or nephrologist if a patient has nephrotic problem or CKD, class 5 or whatever. Uh, what they do is they determine the and make the decision talk to the family that they did this, they exhausted all uh, necessary steps already to, uh, you know, to, to, to cure the disease. However, the terminal case is there and it's no longer curable. So that's why they uh, talk to the family and recommend hospice okay I know it's hard for the family to accept it but then as I go along with this video you would realize how important a hospice is first when a terminally ill patient is going into the course of his disease a, a, a doctor or oncologist would say six months or less okay that's how uh, 
the doctor will determine the prognosis. Why? Because during the terminal stage of a patient, the number one system that shuts down is the digestive system. So take note of that. Meaning, during the course of the disease process, the patient is not eating that much anymore, nor drinking. She or he loses the appetite. Okay? So you can imagine, if you're not eating, you're not drinking, so your stamina, your body will go down. Okay? So I would like to uh, uh, tell you more about what are the other systems that go down when you are terminally ill patient and that makes the doctor to decide to refer you to a hospice. The cognitive functioning of a patient is also shutting down. The heart and the, uh, what you call this, uh, the touch, the skin is still there. You, they could still feel you. The, 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 the hearing is still there and the heart and the lungs are the one that last to fade or shuts down. Okay, based on my experience, family members would, it's hard for them to accept. I know, I understand that. And we always sympathize with them. However, we explain as a nurse we explain to them the consequences. For example, in that digestive system that we are talking about, that's the first system that shuts down, okay? So if a patient is no longer eating due to weakness, and if you force them to eat or put a spoonful of food in, they will just gonna mouth it and they'll just gonna keep it into the mouth, pocket it, and if ever they try to swallow, there's a tendency that they might aspirate, okay? And think about this. Even if they will swallow, the digestive system is no longer functioning that much. So what will gonna happen? They must just gonna cause bloating stomach because it's no longer digested, okay? Aside from the, trust, the aspiration, the bloating of a stomach, okay? And some families also would tell me, no, we cannot allow my mom or dad just go away or pass like that without doing anything. So they would ask for IV because the patient is no longer drinking. So they want IV infusion. And as a nurse, we talk to the doctor and the doctor listening, they would give one unit of fluids, IV fluids. But then because the system of the patient's body is no longer as normal as it should be. Once we good, we uh, started the IV fluids, the system is already rejecting it. So what happened is the eyes will be fluffy, the face will be swollen, the fingers will be edematous because the heart is no longer doing this job to circulate all those fluids in the body into the other parts of the body okay so that is other consequences which I witnessed and experienced and then I talked to the family and they finally agreed that there's no more IV there's no more IV fluids there's no more PO intake so eventually I know like we said it's hard for them to accept and that's the time they would say okay we will go hospice now with hospice, we also educate them that they can keep their rights, especially here in Hawaii. Because some doctors would say, no code. But to them, here in Hawaii, we tell them they could still have the right to make it code or no code. However, our main goal is to keep the patient comfortable, okay? And no side effects like aspiration or other uh, others illnesses and we also keep the skin intact as, as as much as we can because the patient is not moving 
and they're very dependent so it's up to the nurses or the caregiver family to make the patient reposition every at least two hours and put some lotion to keep the skin intact because remember dehydration not moving no meal intake so they are very high risk for pressure ulcers those are the tips that i want you to do i wanted you to remember okay and making them comfortable we have uh, medications that the doctor will prescribe the narcotic morphine or etc so i would talk to those with, with those medication in the future uh, video that I'll make but I just wanted you to uh, understand those two things aspiration the edema the consequences so it's hard for the families to accept that but educating them they would realize that what they're doing is for their mom and dad's benefit they don't want them to suffer more by having them as edema to face because of IV fluids or aspiration pneumonia because they're forcing them to eat, okay? Uh, that's why we we, uh, we go out there in the family and educate uh, the family members. Uh, like we said, it is hard. And we educate them also the signs and symptoms of impending death okay because of they're not eating not drinking of course the output would be lesser okay and then until when the ti early time comes the uh, uh, output is no longer sufficient enough that means the kidney is no longer functioning and because of the poor circulation vitals will be uh, not normal like the skin will become become colder because the, there's no longer good circulation there the blood pressure goes down the temperature goes down and the skin trigger becomes very very poor and at the impending signs of death the breathing also is become slow and then that's the time you can notice the uh, the nail beds are purplish okay and then the feet, soul of the feet become purple. That means the circulation is getting poorer and poorer. And then uh, the eyes will be uh, fixate. They, they can no longer see or they could not move their eyes anymore. Uh, that's what we call a blank stare or glass uh, staring already uh, because of the cognitive function. But they can still hear you okay so lastly i would like to talk about is just to make them comfortable and keep their skin intact to keep their quality of life before they pass okay um there's a lot of things to, dis to discuss with regards to hospital but for those tips that i mentioned to you no force feeding no iv fluids but like we said it's hard so give me a, a, a make a comment downstairs and I will reply and for future uh, videos about hospice and I'll be glad to discuss more so please do click the thumbs up and please subscribe and I'll be willing to help you guys and uh, mahalo thank you in Hawaii uh, and have a good night bye bye